Moving on to the next example, a cube is growing. At what rate is its surface area changing with respect to its side length when its side length is five centimeters? So as we did in the previous question, first thing to figure out, what's the dependent variable, what's the independent variable? Surface area is changing with respect to its side length. So the surface area of the cube is the dependent variable and that's going to be measured in centimeters squared. Area is always squared and the units that we're working with are centimeters. And then the independent variable is the side length of the cube, uh, which is measured in centimeters. Now, surface area of a cube and the side length of a cube, how can we relate these variables in an equation? Well, let's draw a diagram of a cube. So, cube looks something like this. And let's label its side lengths as x. And because it's a cube, all of the lengths on the cube are of equal length. So x, x, and x. So length, width, and height. Now, the area of each face, right, is equal to x squared. Because, for example, the top face here, the area of that would be a length of x times a width of x. The area of this side face here would be x times x, and the area of all of the sides would be x times x, which is just x squared. And on a cube, there are six sides, so there's six of these. So 6x squared gives us the total surface area of the cube. So the surface area is equal to 6x squared. And let's label these x is the side length. Now because they're asking for the rate at which the surface area is changing, when the side length is at five centimeters, they're asking it for a specific point in time. So we are going to be finding the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area when x is equal to five, when the side length is equal to five. We labeled that as x. But before we get to that, let's first find out what's the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area when the side length is equal to some general value a. And we related the dependent and independent variable here with this equation, so surface area equals 6x squared. Now we can also rewrite this as the surface area with respect to the side length x. So finding the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area when x is equal to some general value a, we have the surface area as a function of a plus h minus the surface area as a function of a all over h. So now plugging these in into the formula that we have, so the surface area with respect to x when x is a plus h would be 6a plus h squared minus 6, uh, plugging in a small a for the x, we would just have a squared here. And this is all over h. Taking this and simplifying it further, so we expand this a plus h squared, we foil it, we end up getting a squared plus 2h plus h squared, then distribute the 6 inside the bracket, and then notice how in the numerator the 6a squareds will cancel out. So let me continue this up here, so we'll end up having 12ah <coughs> plus 6h squared all over h. Remember the goal is to get rid of the h in the denominator, so we would factor out the h from the numerator, so we'd have h, 12a plus 6h, all over h. Now the h's cancel out and we're left with 12a plus 6h, and remember the instantaneous rate of change happens when h is very small, when it's approaching zero. So this would go towards zero, and we would just be left with a expression 12a. So this 12a here represents the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area of a cube when its side length is equal to some general value a. So we can just plug in any side length for which we want to find the instantaneous rate of change of for a and we would get the instantaneous rate of change at that point.
So we can do that here because we want the instantaneous rate of change when x is equal to 5 or when a is equal to 5. So we just plug in 5 for a and we get 60. And remember uh, in terms of units rate of change is the change in the dependent variable per one unit change in the independent variable. So the rate of change would be 60 centimeters squared, the area, the surface area is changing at 60 centimeters squared per one unit change or per one centimeter change in the side length, which is the units of the independent variable. This here is uh, super important. A lot of students screw this part up. So remember to put the proper units. It's always the change in the dependent variable per one unit change in the independent variable. And that there is our final answer. So 60 centimeters squared per centimeter. That's the instantaneous rate of change or the rate at which the surface area is changing of the cube when its side length is five centimeters. So as a recap, what we did, we figured out what the dependent variable was, what the independent variable was, plugged it into or made an equation first. So the surface area of a cube is 6x squared where x is equal to the side length. Then we found out a general expression for the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area when the side length is equal to a general value a did all this algebra, got 12a, and then since we want the instantaneous rate of change of the surface area, when the radius is five, we just plug in five for a, and we get 60. Again, another thing you could have done instead, because they're looking for the instantaneous rate of change at a specific point, you could have made the difference quotient as the surface area of five plus h, minus the surface area of five, all over h. So instead of getting this general expression first, if you did this, you would end up getting 60 right away. You could even try it yourself. But as I mentioned in the previous videos, I recommend always getting a general expression first because it gives you a lot more flexibility, especially if you're asked for the instantaneous rate of change multiple times. You can just plug in your independent variable for the a value. Another thing that I didn't mention in the previous video, you can also get the instantaneous rate of change using the preceding and following method and the centered interval method. So since we're finding uh, the instantaneous rate of change at five, you can use values that are really close like 4.9 or 5.1 and then find the uh, average rate of change between the preceding and following interval then average them out or you can find the average rate of change between the centered interval, so between something like 4.9 and 5.1, or something even closer, so 4.99 or 5.01. And if you did that, you would end up getting something very close to 60, if not 60. But if you want the exact instantaneous rate of change, you gotta do the difference quotient and you get an exact uh, instantaneous rate of change of 60 centimeters squared per centimeter.